Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the athletic fields here at Milford High School as Milford TV is happy to bring you coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics. This is Tim Coet on the call, and as you can see, already out there on the field in game action, it is the Milford Lady Hawks varsity girls, vol girls soccer team, excuse me, taking on a Kelly Rex division rival in the Hockamock League, the Franklin Lady Panthers. Our first opportunity to see the Lady Hawks soccer team in action this season. This is now their second game of their 2017 fall sports schedule. They come in with a record of 0-1-0, suffering a loss to King Philip last week, a 4-0 defeat. Franklin comes into the matchup with a record of 1-0-1. A win against North Attleboro on their opening day, 3-0, and then a 1-1 draw against Algonquin in a non-conference matchup over the weekend. Getting this game underway today on the 11th of September, getting the week started. Again, happy to be continuing our coverage of this 2017-2018 fall sports season. This Milford girls program, once again under the direction of head coach Jay Maste. Milford now tries to regroup deep in their defensive side of the field. And guiding that one out of play was Brianna Braza, a senior on this team now, solid defender. Talking to Coach Maste prior to the game, Brianna forced to miss some time last season due to injury, but back and healthy. And Coach Maste feels that's a huge plus for this team. That ball streaking up the middle and quickly a scoring opportunity. And Franklin is able to take advantage. Forced to miss some time last season due to injury, but back and healthy. And Coach Maste feels that's a huge plus for this team. That ball streaking up the middle and quickly a scoring opportunity. And Franklin is able to take advantage. And just moments into the game, the Lady Panthers able to take a one to nothing lead. So wasting no time, that ball drifting across the goal mouth and the goal punched in by Jess Kroschel. A senior. So Kroschel gives her team a quick 1-0 lead with still 37-40 to go as the ball travels the length of the floor on, or the length of the playing surface on the near sideline drifts out of play. So still over 37 minutes to go. Plenty of time for Milford to regroup, although Coach Maste a little surprised out of the effort from his group in that opening day loss to King Philip, said he did not expect the team to get off to such a sluggish start. Maybe questioning a bit of the focus in that game, so hoping to see the efforts redoubled on their home field here today. But some leaks on that defensive side led to Really a point blank easy opportunity for Franklin and a program of the caliber of the Franklin Lady Panthers. You cannot allow that kind of a golden opportunity right in front of the goal mouth or they will make you pay and that is exactly what happened. And Milford now trying to carry play on their attacking side of the field. The shot sent on goal by Leanne Kibbe. But the save was made by the standout senior goalie, Catherine Robbins, Cat as she is known by her Panther teammates taking over as the full-time goaltender for this team last season. It's a position that has been a huge strength, one of the backbone strengths of these Franklin girls soccer programs in recent years, but Robbins stepping into that starter's role last season and was one of the top goalkeepers in all of the Hockamock League. Easily able to handle that shot on net by Leanne Kibbe, who Figures to factor in very heavily. One of the primary scoring options for this Milford team as the season goes on. And you think back to last year, Kristen Franzini, who was the leading scorer for this team in her freshman season, no longer a part of this program, off playing soccer at the collegiate level. And some major shoes to fill, but Coach Maste confident in the skills of Kibbe. And now trying to streak in as that ball drifted loose tantalizingly close to the Milford net, but the Lady Hawks could not settle it down. The closest in the vicinity was the sophomore, Juliana France. 
France trying to follow up on a solid season as a varsity starter in her freshman year. And now getting tripped up is Rachel LeBlanc. No whistle on the play as the ball drifts out on the near side just beyond the Milford bench. 34-54 left on the game clock in this first half action. The early goal scored by Franklin. Not quite three minutes in. The toss in now by the Lady Panthers. France able to intercept it. Milford now tries to settle it. France with some good footwork to keep that just hugged inside the near sideline, but it eventually trickles down and out towards the near corner. In net for Milford once again is Olivia Marshall. Experienced some growing pains at the position last year, serving as the goalkeeper as a freshman, but again, Coach Maste seeing a lot of development in Marshall as the season went on last year and also what he saw out of Olivia Marshall during the preseason. This ball deflecting in towards the Milford attacking side. Lady Hawks able to get to it, trying for the centering pass. They had Hannah Martin, the junior, streaking in towards goal, but the pass did not reach the junior. And now right back out to midfield and ahead of steam for number 15, that is Miranda Smith. Another prime scoring threat for this Franklin offense. Milford now shoots it down the near sideline and again, it drifts out of play with a little over 33 minutes left in the opening half. A very large varsity roster for this Franklin team. If you take a peek at the two benches for these two teams, you will see the discrepancy. The bench full on the Franklin side, only four players not out on the field right now on the Lady Hawks side. But as always, Franklin drawing very large numbers in all of their athletic programs. Toss in now comes from Haley Atkinson, the junior. Back out just beyond the center circle and now drifting back. The Franklin defense has to regroup. They can't settle it down and it will ricochet right to the edge and then out. Just staying in on the track. And a quick toss and now Franklin sends it back out as far as center before it's swatted back in by Annie Flanagan, an underclassman on the varsity squad for Milford. You'll recall they had a large group of freshmen make the varsity team last year. The ball in the box, but this time Marshall able to scoop it. Head coach for Franklin is Tom Gason. Very talented head coach. Steadily leading this Franklin girls team. Watching on the sidelines. For Coach Maste, his assistant coach, Shannon Brown, also patrolling the sidelines on the Milford side. Milford with a high drifting kick back out as far as center and now some pushing and shoving. And that call will go against the Lady Panthers, a little bit too physical there for the officials liking. It looked like that might have been Kaylee DeSimone who made the contact, and now the kick sent downfield by Milford. It clears everyone. Madeline Boyle, the sophomore, sending that kick in. But Milford now with a chance to reset for another kick. This one in much better position as we tick down to 30 minutes to play in the first half. Milford looking for the equalizer down 1-0 at the moment. This time it's the senior captain Maggie Boyle who sets up for the kick. And that one elevated a bit too much. That clears the crossbar. Goes right through the football uprights and to the edge of the football field. So a missed opportunity. That time for the Lady Hawks it stays 
A zero in the column for Milford right now. As Robbins sets up for the goal kick. Milford trying to get on the board against Franklin for the first time in a few seasons. Nice steal there by the Lady Hawks, but the ball drifts beyond the goal line, and it will be another kick for the keeper coming up here. Last season, Milford dropping a 4-0 decision to Franklin on the road. They've played at Franklin High School the last two years for the annual Hockamock League crossover matchup between these two teams. A 4-0 loss last season at Franklin. A 5-0 loss back in October of 2015. So the games have been typically lopsided. Milford trying to bring an end to that this afternoon. Allowing an early goal and now the ball sent back down deep onto the Franklin attacking side. Milford able to get down to that corner first. Smartly played by Milford. Last touch by Franklin. They allowed it to cross the goal line and set up the goal kick. It's Madeline Boyle who sends the kick back out to midfield. Now angling around a defender is Leanne Kibbe. Could not quite spring the ball free. And Boyle again. A high arcing kick back out to midfield. Under 30 minutes to go in the half. Still technically in the waning days of summer here out on the athletic fields. Temperatures in the mid-70s for this game here today. Nice blue skies and sunshine overhead, so we'll certainly enjoy this weather for fall sports while we can get it. We know it will change in a hurry as the calendar ticks on. This girls' soccer team really experiencing some rough weather for their home games last year. A lot of damp raw, rainy days. Not easy to stay loose in those conditions, but not a factor here today. Milford shoots this one through a lot of traffic on goal, but right there to make the play was Robbins. So the Lady Hawks have had a couple of check-ins on the senior goalkeeper so far. She's been up to the task both times. Fairly routine plays each time for the senior keeper. Now Milford with a little bit of space to roam as they take this one back up the field on the foot of Annie Flanagan. Now the pass away, but into a couple of Franklin defenders. Now Milford sends it back in. A couple of quick passes, but that last one from France going nowhere in particular. And now Franklin able to reset out to center. redirects that one off of Franklin foot and out. So the toss in on the Milford side as we see a couple of personnel substitutions for the Lady Hawks. As is the case more often than not in the early days of a season, it's all about trying to find those ways to absorb the losses from the previous season. You think back to last year's team for the Lady Hawks, both Kristen Franzini and Gabby Riley, who were so integral in the offensive schemes. And you also think about on the defensive side with Nicole Dahlgren, who aside from being one of the finest leaders that you would find at the high school level, she was also one of the top defenders on the soccer field. And in the mid midfield, Francesca Shippard and Sydney Morrison also doing some terrific work for this team as well. So those are some key personnel pieces not back for this year. And with a lot of sophomores and even a couple of freshmen possibly factoring into this varsity team as the season goes on, it's all about finding the right pieces in the right positions. As Franklin plays this one back to their keeper who sends a sharp kick low on the ground. Franklin trying to control it. Milford dumps it back in with 25 and change left on the game clock in this first half. Ashley Starks now fighting for it on the far sideline. 
Milford will play it back out to the midfield. LeBlanc back in towards Flanagan. Flanagan trying to dump it down into the corner, but that will deflect out of play before Juliana France could get in the neighborhood. And no doubt this Franklin girls soccer team is suffering through some of the same frustration that their high school football team is experiencing, and that is the inability to play games on their home turf. The turf field at Franklin High School undergoing some renovations during the summer, laying new artificial surface down and also a new track, a field that was supposed to be done in the final weeks of August. That work is still ongoing and the field is unplayable. And so that has forced Franklin to get creative trying to find alternative places to play or turning home games into road games, which is what will happen coming up this Friday night for the football team between the football game between these two schools. A game that was supposed to take place in Franklin will be played here at Milford High School. So the Hawks football team an opportunity to play a week two home game. They were originally scheduled to play their first three on the road. Played in deep on the Franklin defensive side. Nice athletic play by Juliana France. They're back to the net just trying to send that kick deeper. Ultimately didn't work out the way she hoped, but great effort. And you're seeing a very strong effort across the board from Milford. They look very focused in, so maybe some nerves getting worked out in that first game against Franklin. Letting up the leaky goal in the early minutes of this game, but showing some more consistency since then. Trying to translate that into a goal on the board to even this game up. It is still a 1-0 lead for Franklin. Starting to get close to the midway point of this opening half. Waiting for the toss in now to come from the Lady Panthers. Sent in softly, Starks immediately closes in. And the ball ends up out of play. Once again, a couple of players on each side looking to check back into this one. Among them is the junior from Milford, Cassie Probert. Now a deep kick sent in by Franklin. A lot of hang time off of that header by Milford. Franklin trying to set something up in the corner now, and Milford will guide it out of play. Madeline Boyle sending that one out on the near sideline. But a toss in coming up deep in the attacking side now for Franklin looking to tack on to their lead. And Boyle there again, the ball Staying on the field for a couple of extra bounces, but eventually went beyond the goal line and a goal kick now for the Milford Lady Hawks. Coach Maste giving Leanne Kibbe a bit of a breather on the sidelines now, going over some strategy with her as she came to the sideline. Franklin Keeper now having to come out of the box to play that ball as you saw the good closing speed by Olivia Sullivan. Olivia Sullivan transferring to Milford from Nipmuc for this year. Coach Maste happy to have Sullivan in the mix. The whistle against Milford there, the hometown fans none too pleased to hear it. Franklin, good speed out of Haley Atkinson. Now poking that one in deep, trying to get that pass to Sydney St. Marie. Franklin tries to control on the far sideline. And now sent back in deep, and they'll just send it on right to the keeper who blasts it out of play.
As this ball comes back in, we will dip under the midway point now in this first half. Just under 20 minutes to play. A very early goal by Jess Kroschel. The difference in this one so far as Milford will once again check in with Robbins. Right on a line, she's able to make the sure-handed play. Might have been Maggie Boyle who sent that one in towards the net. And Boyle back in the center circle sends that one along, but out of play. As again, they looked for Sullivan. So getting our first look with our Milford TV cameras rolling on Olivia Sullivan. Demonstrating very good speed, quick acceleration. Rachel LeBlanc there to make the play. Another sturdy defender for Milford to rely on. Now a foot race for this ball and the keeper able to get to it and get the partial clear. With Hannah Martin bearing down. Now it's Starks. A couple of players will hit the deck and they'll say that Starks initiated the contact. <laughs> Looked to be the right call. Not a lot of contact, but you could see just a little bit of a shove from that left arm by Ashley Starks. A lot of space now on the near side and high drifting shot won't land for the Lady Panthers. Haley Atkinson releasing that shot. Trying to bend it in under the crossbar, crossbar, but that drifted over the goal and out of play. So Milford again will kick it away with just under 18 minutes to play in the half. Milford's second straight game against a Kelly Rex division opponent. As Franklin plays it back to their D now across midfield and drifts out just beyond the reach of Milford's trainer, Jonathan Raskow, on the trainer's cart. Milford will see a third straight Kelly Rex opponent coming up in their next game. Coming up in a couple of days, they will visit Taunton before finally seeing their first Davenport opponent in the Stoughton Lady Knights on September 15th. Milford's defense able to successfully clear that ball out And now misplayed, here's Sullivan again on the move up the far sideline, has a defender closing in, leaves the ball behind. Sends it backwards before. Now the ball rolling down the far sidelines and out. And Franklin will toss it back in with 16 and a half minutes left on the game clock for this first half. Just beyond the reach of Milford. Franklin patiently waiting for it. Good pass, but now broken up by Boyle. She now gets it back. Trying to get the quick pass away to Rachel LeBlanc. Just a hair off line. Now Boyle gets it back on her foot. Gets past two defenders. Now sends the long leading pass ahead to Hannah Martin, but again broken up by Franklin. Now Madeline Boyle. She gets muscled off the ball eventually. Atkinson there again. She has been active on both sides of the field through this first half. A near miss on a scoring chance a few moments ago. Now makes a good defensive play. Milford will have the toss in, 15-25 on the game clock as they let it roll into the corner. Now France looking for the redirect in front of the goal. Now it's Sullivan trying to settle it. Franklin gets it away, it drifts out. 
run right into a group of runners out on the track. Now back down into the corner and Milford sliding in to try to poke that ball away. The whistle goes again against the Lady Hawks. Madeline Boyle with the physical play. Maggie Boyle, excuse me, on that last play that drew the whistle. More substitutions on both sides as Leanne Kibbe comes back into the game. When I asked Coach Maste before the game who we felt was best suited to fill that role left vacant by Kristen Franzini, the first name out of Coach Maste's mouth was Leanne Kibbe, very confident in her abilities on the attacking side. So after she got a few moments break on the sidelines, back into the game with about 14 minutes left to go before halftime. Boyle again right in the thick of it at midfield. Lob toss back in towards Hannah Martin and then immediately back out again. Milford looking for their first goal of this fall season. Suffering that four to nothing shutout loss against King Philip at the end of last week. Trailing here one to nothing. France now with a little extra time trying to find Flanagan, but now it's back to the Milford D and a nice heads up play. And there's Madeline Boyle. She could feel the Franklin attacker bearing down. Stopped in her tracks, gave her an opportunity to send that ball back the length of the field, but just a few strides ahead of Milford as they try to counter down the other end of the field. 12.53 on the game clock now. As Cat Robbins sets up for the goal kick. Line drive kick. Dying down at the 40 yard line of the football markings. And some hard contact as that ball went out of play and a Franklin player a little slow to get up. Appears to be all right. Looks like it was Jess Groschel who has scored the lone goal of the game who was a little bit slow to get back to her feet. Now hits the deck again. Franklin tries to force the action back towards the Milford goal. Milford's had the more extended time in their attacking side as this half has gone along. This ball will stay with Milford as it just barely drifts out. 11.38 now on the game clock. Maggie Boyle now will get a rest. Get some hearty applause from the Milford fans here in attendance. Maggie, as always, very much a factor anytime she is out on the field. Franklin looking like they were possibly going to break that ball loose, but Milford's defense able to close in just in time. Braza fighting for that one at midfield. It goes back to LeBlanc. Flanagan back and forth with Braza. And now Franklin takes it back through traffic over center. And Starks pokes it in deep. But some good acceleration out of Atkinson, the first to get there. The clear back out towards center, but Milford dumps it back. Braza to France and across the way to Christina Shirelli. Madeline Boyle, will that one stay in? It looks like it will. Franklin has to play it. Milford muscling for position there. Hannah Martin, Ashley Starks both involved. Now back out to center again. And Mil 
Wolford will calmly play this ball. And that one goes out, it will be Franklin Ball. It's surprising that Milford wouldn't play that back to the keeper there for a kick back down the field. Instead, trying to make the play on it, it ended up going out off of Milford. And now Franklin with a toss in. On the attacking side, here's LeBlanc. She's able to get the partial clear. Franklin heads it back in deep. It's now 9.28 left in the first half. Here's Martin again, this time on the far side, gets dragged down, no whistle. Another ball sent in deep, they had a player, Miranda Smith. Trying to find a little bit of space to get a pass or a shot away. Looked like she wanted to shoot it there. And the whistle going against Franklin inside the box. Some tense moments there as Franklin. Looked like they might be prepared to tack on to that lead, but it stays. One to nothing in favor of Franklin. Later stages of this first half action. Got this game started right around 345. Play has been pretty steady. No stoppages with the exception of the goal scored just three minutes in. Just Crouchel. Milford a good pass ahead. Franklin there to break it up. That was Madison Stewart. France now sends it in to Kibbe. That one right into the hands of the Franklin coaching staff. in their hallmark navy blue and powdered blue sporting the flashy striped uniform tops for this season. Milford in all white. Well, for trying to set something up here late in this first half. Find a seam as Julia Oliveira takes it down. Now LeBlanc, a dangerous pass. A little bit lackadaisical by LeBlanc, which is very atypical for her, but just able to get that pass into Boyle and it eventually drifts out right at midfield where it's tossed back in by Franklin, a missed kick by the Lady Panthers, and Milford briefly takes possession before the ball again drifts out. It stays with the Lady Hawks, or so they thought, but now the official signaling Franklin ball. Looks like instead they will allow for the substitution, so it will be Milford to toss it in as we come down to six minutes on the game clock. Ashley Starks will Get a breather on the sidelines. Well, for trying to get some fresh legs out on the field for these final five plus minutes. Back to Madeline Boyle again. She'll dump it down the far sideline. And Milford, good effort there. Sneaking in from behind was Kibby. Poking it in towards the net, hoping for something good to happen. And we'll get the toss in. Milford just could not find any space. Played well by the Franklin D. 
So we'll see the goal kick on the Franklin side. Traveling now under the five minute mark. Robbins another low line drive kick. Nearly picked off by Boyle, but Franklin able to regroup. Tight defense played by Annie Flanagan. Franklin back to center and now high kick lofted in and LeBlanc gets positioned, sends the kick back out towards center. Now here's Maggie Boyle. She gets sent down to the turf. Looked like she got a little bit of an elbow shove. And now instead we'll get the whistle on the Franklin side. So they allowed the contact at midfield. And now we'll see more physical play in the near corner. And with every whistle, the Milford fans getting more and more frustrated. So some tense moments here once again with just over three and a half minutes to play in the half. We'll see our first corner kick. It comes from the near corner. Taken by Franklin's Grace Gallo. And that one over the net and out of play. So Franklin cannot capitalize. Goal kick coming up for Milford. And just over the head of Juliana France and then out of play. Tossed in by Milford, but immediately met by the Lady Panthers. They'll now have a chance to set up across the middle. So Maggie Boyle able to close in, and now a quick reaction for Brianna Braza sends it over towards the far sideline, but now dumped back in by the Lady Panthers. And Milford can't keep it in. Julia Oliveira. They're in the neighborhood, and now Franklin trying to set things up. Coach Gason very active on the sidelines, barking out orders to his players on the field. Played well by Brianna Praza down in the corner. Shielding with the body, letting that ball drift out of play, but Franklin refuses to allow the clear. Now a dangerous ricochet. And it looks like we'll get a verbal warning issued on the Franklin side. No cards issued, but the talking to to Jess Krauschel, so she has been a point of discussion throughout this half. She has the lone goal on the board, has also mixed it up physically at times through this half as well. Under two minutes to play now, so we wait on from here for the signal at field level. Kick sent in deep by Annie Flanagan. It'll take a bounce right into the hands of the keeper, Cat Robbins. That ball deflecting between LeBlanc and Flanagan. And the whistle ends up going against Franklin this time. Wolford sending the pass across the way to France, playing it up the far sideline. But has to regroup back to LeBlanc. Uses some nice footwork to clear a defender, now trying to get it up to Boyle. 
Ashley Starks back out on the field, getting involved in the play. Some space now up the far sideline, some good passes. And so there is the whistle, and a very quick first half will come to a close here. Milford hoping to get themselves in position for one final scoring option, but time running out. And so we have reached halftime here at the Milford soccer field. The lone goal scored not quite three minutes into this match came off the foot of the senior, Jess Crouchel. That gave Franklin the one to nothing lead. They'll take the one to nothing lead into halftime. And so we will pause very briefly. We will be back with more action between the Milford Lady Scarlet Hawks and the Franklin Lady Panthers when we come back next on this coverage of Scarlet Hawks Athletics on Milford TV. And we welcome you right back inside Milford High School out here on the turf field here at MHS where we begin second half action in this varsity girls soccer matchup between Milford and Franklin. Milford with the one to nothing deficit to overcome. As we mentioned right prior to the break, Jess Crouchel of Franklin responsible for the only scoring that came just under three minutes in to the first half. Milford with a couple of scoring opportunities as the first half went on. Nothing particularly strong for the Lady Hawks. A couple of shots on net that were easily handled by Robbins. As now we'll see the early free kick for the Lady Panthers. Milford now looks to attack from left to right across your screens for the second half action. And really hard contact there as Madeline Boyle came in. And it looks like Franklin's Erin Quayle bore the brunt of that. She tries to get back to her feet but slow to get up and now the official's over to check on her. And right in front of the visiting bench, she'll head to the sideline. The freshman already making a name for herself on this varsity squad as she scored Franklin's lone goal in their draw against Algonquin back on Saturday. Off the assist by Carly Alston. So she will get checked out on the sidelines as this ball is sent in deep towards the Milford goal handled by Olivia Marshall. And for Marshall, when all was said and done, I do believe the goal that was scored was the only shot on net for Franklin in that first half. A couple of other intriguing possibilities for Franklin later on in the half, but none that materialized in actual shots on net. The lone corner kick in the first half came for Franklin, but the ball ultimately drifted over the net and out of play. Offense was something that, by Coach Gason's own admission, was not where they thought that it would be last season. Although even with that, it was still a good year in terms of goals scored as Franklin sends this one back to their keeper. Send the soft pass out to the far sideline. But Franklin last season scoring a total of 36 goals to only nine goals allowed. On the Milford side, it was 28 total goals scored on the 2016-17 season to 37 goals allowed. So quite a disparity. And again, you talk about those nine goals allowed that was thanks to some very strong play in net by Cat Robbins. Milford, meanwhile, the defense able to get into position to play it back to their keeper, but Marshall can't get the clear. And now we'll make the catch on that lob sent back in towards the Milford goal. Sure hands for the sophomore, Olivia Marshall.
Ashley Starks getting bumped off the ball. It heads out of play. Just about five minutes into this second half action. So that 36 goal total for Franklin, which at first glance, you would say that's a fairly successful regular season, but it was 20 goals fewer than what the previous year's girls varsity team was able to amass. And that goal total was well below the leading scoring team from the Kelly Rex division from a season ago. That was the Mansfield Lady Hornets that scored 56 goals in total for the 2016-17 season, 53 for Oliver Ames. And King Philip, despite finishing a spot lower in the standings, outscored Franklin 47 goals to Franklin's 36. But that goes to show you the caliber of competition in the Hockamock League. Also some very strong offensive teams in the Davenport division last year. The conversation starting with North Attleboro, who scored a total of 59 goals last year. So they were the top scoring team in all of the Hawk. Foxborough with 46, Canton with 45, Sharon with 44, and then a large drop off to Milford at 28. And then a tough season for Stoughton last year that scored just six goals on the entire regular season while allowing 91. As this ball gets sent in deep. Milford clears it back out to center. Kibbe trying to stay with it. The ball out of play, last touch by Franklin. The quick toss in by Shirelli as Milford tries to push the tempo a bit, but they cannot keep the ball in play. That one takes a high bounce over the short fence. And that will send One of the kids helping out on the sidelines, a long way to retrieve that loose ball. Now streaking up is Juliana France using her good speed. Plays it off towards the near sideline. She's able to win the race to the ball. Just keeps it hugging that near sideline. And now they'll say it's out. And Coach Maste in disbelief at the call. That was a great play by France up the middle. And the self-pass to the near sideline was able to keep it just in, trying to play it down towards the corner, but ultimately ruled out. The momentum crusher, at least in that moment for Milford. This is an interesting matchup for Coach Maste as well, as here we see France Mixing it up again, winning that ball. Now sending a good pass away to Kibby. Here she is all alone. Can she center it up? Instead sends it towards net, but up and over and out of play. Maybe a little bit too antsy for Kibby. She had Martin coming up the far side. That play developing in a hurry and with Kibby Speed able to break free. But still no goals on the board for the Lady Hawks. It's still a 1-0 score with Franklin in the lead. 31-54 to go in the second half. Here's France again, who's really starting to exert herself in the second half action. And now on the other side, here's Grouchel. She'll try to center it up. The ball. In dangerous territory for Milford, they get the clear to the edge of the box. Now LeBlanc sends it back out towards Kibbe. Now Martin trying to play it. Ends up out of play. Tumbling to the turf was Grace Gallo, but no whistle. Madeline Boyle with the toss back in. There's Kibby again. Now 
Kibbe with a nice pass, just sneaking it past a defender. Up to Sienna Pierce, and Pierce gets tripped up. And the Milford fans again howling, looking for the whistle. Instead, Milford forced to play it. Back out just past center. Now here's Starks with the right foot. Tries to shoot it back in deep. Franklin there. And now Franklin up the far sideline with Miranda Smith. They'll try to center it up. Blocked away by Flanagan. And that one goes out as we tick down to 30 minutes on the second half clock. Cassie Probert once again at the scorer's table waiting to check back in. Looks like we'll get some fresh personnel on the Franklin side at the next whistle as well as Sydney St. Marie heads over waiting to retake the field. This one leaking out past the keeper, but fortunately Madeline Boyle there to back it up and get the partial clear. Marshall could not cover that one up. Franklin kept fighting for it. But fortunately, Madeline Boyle able to serve as that last line of defense, and now it's Milford who will shoot it down to the opposite end. The keeper, Robin, sends it back out to the far side. Another close call, but the stop made. Madeline Boyle helping to keep this just a one-goal deficit. Shirelli will head to the bench as Probert retakes the field. It has not really felt like one team has been able to steal momentum as this game has gone on. That early goal, really the end result of a breakdown defensively for Milford. But since then, Neither team has really been able to carry play. To the near sideline, Milford cannot get there. Sienna Pierce just a few steps late. We've already had an opportunity to debut our fall sports coverage, an opportunity to cover girls volleyball matchup against King Philip that took place in the Milford gym last Friday night. You can check out our coverage of that game on the educational channel, also on YouTube coming up. We also hope to check in with the boys soccer team later on this week. The boys hosting Taunton on Wednesday. And then as we mentioned, the football team will enjoy a home game against Franklin coming up on Friday. It will technically be Franklin serving as the home team, but the game played here in Milford, which will give us an opportunity to have our first football coverage of the season. So a lot of sporting events to keep an eye out for on our Milford TV educational channel and also, as always, on YouTube as Leanne Kibbe again trying to fight through traffic, looking for that scoring chance. Probert out to the sideline. Ball drifts out. Under 27 minutes to play in the half. Second half action still. Just that one to nothing margin. LeBlanc, good play initially, then got muscled off the ball, ended up on her backside. As Franklin tries to settle it inside the box, now Madeline Boyle just a nose for the play. Always in the right spot at the right time to help Milford get out of danger. Now ahead of steam for Pierce. Now tries to send the pass away to Kibbe. She bounces off of contact, racing for that ball, but it will be beyond the goal line. Goal kick for Franklin. Just not enough time for Kibbe to get down into that corner. 
Kibbe will now get a quick rest. Hannah Martin, who had checked out of the game, now back on the field. Twenty-five minutes and change to go in the second half. Well, a lot of strong words on the Franklin sideline, says the coaching staff. Talks things over with Molly Riley, the senior defender. Very animated conversation. Milford with the toss just over the leaping Olivia Sullivan. Now Starks into the corner, trying to center it up. Deflected off of Franklin. Now the toss will go out towards Boyle. Tries to protect, looking for a passing partner. Miscommunication there. And she tried to send it back towards Sullivan. And now LeBlanc having to play it deep down the other end of the field, just able to poke it past a couple of Franklin players. Now a shot making it all the way on goal, but the save made by Olivia Marshall. I believe that was Anna Balkis, the sophomore, with that deep attempt. A couple of players getting tangled up, and once again, the whistle going against Milford. And now it is the quartet of bench players on the Milford side voicing their displeasure. It's not been a whole lot of love on the Milford side towards these officials as this game has gone along. And keeping it on their attacking side. And down to 23 and a half minutes to play. Franklin will reset back across the center circle. Now they take it back towards middle. Trying for the crossing pass, but it's intercepted. Pierce sending the ball back up the field, just missing Hannah Martin. Maggie Boyle to the sideline. Milford with the toss. Deflected off of Hannah Martin. And also off of a Franklin player, so Milford will toss it in. Ball up for grabs, Franklin tries to settle, Milford will poke it out of play. Play now right in front of head coach Jay Maste. Started to make the point a few moments ago, but an intriguing matchup for coach Maste, coaching this Milford team against Franklin. As you take a look at this Franklin roster, you'll see the name Emily Maste, a senior midfielder and forward wearing number 10. That is Coach Maste's niece. His second niece that has sported the Panther colors. Emily scoring a goal in Franklin's victory against Milford last season, which led to some friendly family ribbing afterwards. Deep toss over the head of Martin. Who can settle it first? Ashley Starks with a bit of a lob kick in towards the net and the whistle against Milford. Taking things down close to the midway point in the second half. 
Will we see offense generated in this game down the stretch of this second half action? About 55 minutes without a goal scored. Stark sends that one along for Martin. On to Sullivan. Sullivan trying to find Martin in the near corner. Trying to stay with it. Now Juliana France jumps into the play. And now a Milford player down. And so it looks like just a little bit of a foot cramp perhaps for Madeline Boyle. She was trying to stretch it out quick and stay in the play. But the official with the stoppage, so Boyle will head to the sidelines. Try to stretch things out. Jonathan Raskow now over to check on the star defender. Clock continuing to roll down to 19.28 as LeBlanc sends that one over the Franklin line. Hannah Martin trying to get a shot away, but the Panthers close in just in time. like it was developing nicely for release for Hannah Martin, but Franklin able to break it up. Shots have been at a premium for the Lady Hawks throughout this match. Back to Milford possession still on the attacking side. Maggie Boyle now back into the game. Madeline Boyle still stretching it out in front of the Milford bench. Ashley Starks will head to the sidelines. A clear for Franklin. They get a good bounce. Braza trying to stay with it. Franklin trying to speed up the action as Milford argued the call. You're feeling as if maybe there's a little frustration that's starting to show through for Milford with the officials. Milford getting back defensively, denying the shot on goal. Franklin perhaps wanting another whistle there. Haley Tulin, the junior, hoping for a good look from short range. Approaching 17 minutes left to play. Tulin again sends the pass. Back out towards the middle of the field where it's intercepted by Leanne Kibbe. And now pass handled well by Sullivan. She takes it up, gets a clean pass out towards Oliveira. Tries to keep it in on the corner, collides with the flag as that ball goes out of play. Doing absolutely everything she could. Good fan support for both of these teams in the Milford stands. A lot of the Franklin parents making the short drive up 495 to catch some soccer action in the beautiful late afternoon weather. Sixteen oh five on the game clock. with the toss. 
Maggie Boyle trying to release it towards Olivia Sullivan. And this is the stage of the game where you have to wonder if the larger bench for Franklin is a weapon in their favor. They certainly have an opportunity to send a lot of fresh personnel out onto the field. Milford trying to cycle through, using their substitutions as best they can. But again, with just a four-player bench, a lot of these players have seen a lot of time on the field. 15-10 on the game clock. As Franklin advances. Carly Alston with the pass back, and now Panthers send it back in deep towards Erin Quayle. Good to see Quayle back out on the field as she was shaken up a bit earlier in the match. The pass ahead by Oliveira deflected. Fourteen and a half minutes to go as this one is sent deep, accelerating ahead now. As Franklin then the shot attempt broken up by the keeper sliding in with the feet to prevent the shot by Balkus. Two Milford players in the area, but Balkus able to turn on the afterburners, split the defense, and get out in front for that potential. Look on net, forcing the keeper to come out to play it. <laughs> After some confusion with Getting the fresh ball back out onto the field to play. Milford now sets up for the goal kick. 13 and a half minutes remain. And deflected immediately out. Substitutions for Milford as Martin and Starks come back out onto the field. Oliveira and Sullivan to the bench now. Milford lists a couple of freshmen on their varsity squad, Alyssa Monahan and also Catherine Madden, right now operating on the JV team. Coach Maste wanting to see those freshmen get some consistent minutes on the JV side to potentially be called upon later on in the season. Maggie Boyle taking her time, trying to find an opening. Drifts right back to the middle of the field where Franklin's able to settle it. Boyle back into the play, trying to wrestle the ball free. Closing in for support it was Kibbe. And now Starks shooting that ball ahead. Here's Kibbe. She gets to it first, taking her time, trying for the centering pass for Martin, who was right in front of the goal mouth, but the pass broken up. And again, Milford maybe taking an extra moment or two to try to get that perfect pass away instead of taking a more aggressive approach, just trying to make something happen. Said now 11 and a half minutes to go. Milford still in search of that elusive first goal of the year. Play up the far sideline, possession going back and forth, but now Milford deflects it out off the foot of Christina Shirelli. Kaylee Simone back out onto the field. Frank 
Franklin now trying to take it up that far sideline. LeBlanc ends up playing it out. In towards the box and now a goal kick for the Lady Hawks and more Panthers substitutions. As Miranda Smith comes back onto the field, replacing Sabrina Addy. Just the one goal lead. Franklin unable to extend. Milford, to this point, has not been able to find that equalizer, but this game's still very much up for grabs as we are under 10 minutes to play. Here's Martin trying to protect as she sends the pass ahead towards Juliana France. Toss in by the Milford bench from Franklin. They can't keep it in, now Starks quickly tosses it with some room for Kibbe. And Kibbe down to the corner. ball out and it looks like we will see our first Milford corner kick. So a good chance here to perhaps put the equalizer in as Madeline Boyle sets up for the kick. No wind to speak of on the field right now. Kick comes in on a line. She finds Kibby. The ball now deflects high in the air, out to the edge of the box, and now back out. Milford unable to try to jam it in towards net, as now LeBlanc looks to play it ahead. Shoves the pass ahead towards Martin, but into the box where Robbins is able to calmly scoop it up. So Milford's first corner kick of the match comes inside 10 minutes to play. Boyle was able to do her job getting that ball right to Kibby. Kibby unable to redirect it in towards the net, so the scoreboard unchanged. As Marshall loops the kick through the center circle, Martin with a header to send it in deep on the Milford attacking side. And now back to the keeper who blasts it out. Good bounce for Franklin, allowing De Simone to make a move upfield. Clock continuing to roll down close to seven minutes to play. For tries for the clear up over the head of Martin. Starks closes in now to the far sideline. Shirelli tries to settle it. Now Milford able to get it back as far as center. Back to the defense for the Lady Panthers. Ahead, but LeBlanc is there. Gets the pass to Starks, deflects right to Juliana France, and now here's Maggie Boyle. She'll get there first. Sends the centering pass away, but no one there. A little bit too out in front of Hannah Martin. That was more like it for the Lady Hawks. You saw the quicker reaction for Maggie Boyle pulling the trigger on the centering pass, but Hannah Martin needed a few more strides to get there. See if that can give the Lady Hawks a jolt here in these late stages. Under six minutes now left on the clock. Milford trying to avoid their second straight loss to open the season. Franklin with a win and a tie so far.
Franklin has allowed just a single goal so far on the season, scoring four. Pitching a shutout against Milford here so far, but still time left. Franklin perhaps going into a bit of a defensive shell here to try to run down some of this clock. France now trying to get it back to Starks. Starks just trying to get it away from the defense and the whistle will go against Franklin here. Quick release on that shot. They'll set it back up. Boyle unleashing that one on a line, trying to pick that upper left corner. And it looks like again trying to stretch out that left foot that cramped up on her a few moments earlier in the second half. And sends it on a line that bounces in the deflection. And the score for the Lady Hawks to tie the game. So Boyle sending that one just under the bar. It was deflected down a lot of contact for Milford. Along with Cat Robbins. And so we'll see, do they keep this as a goal for Milford? It looks like they will not. It'll be instead the goal kick for Franklin, so nearly tying this game, but the contact made for Milford against the Franklin keeper, so no goal for the Lady Hawks. It stays a one to nothing Franklin lead now with three and a half minutes to play. So close to jamming that one home. Off the free kick from Madeline Boyle. Robbins able to make the stop but couldn't hang on, leaving the rebound chance. She was able to stand strong and also survive some strong contact. Now tested again from longer range but is able to grasp that one right in the midsection. We go under three minutes to play. Milford able to win the ball right at center. But it's Franklin that controls for the moment. Weaving that one around Starks. Juliana France closes in, but Franklin able to advance back onto their attacking side. Rachel LeBlanc slides in, breaks that up. Now Maggie Boyle takes it ahead and gets the pass away to Sullivan. And that will kick out of play. Milford. Looking for the quick toss as we come down to two minutes left. Franklin allows that ball to roll out. Last touch by Milford, so another goal kick coming up. We will now go under two minutes to play. Time running out for Milford to put a goal on the board here to try to tie this game up. There's LeBlanc, briefly leaves the ball behind but regroups. Tries to get the pass ahead to Maggie Boyle. She wasn't expecting it. Now Boyle with that pass a little bit offline in the neighborhood of France. Set things up now for Franklin. They take their time. Milford hoping for just that one last chance before time expires here. Franklin hoping to just bleed the rest of this clock down. The ball out. Milford will toss it in. And deep ahead to Flanagan. Franklin back out towards center. 
Just seconds left in this one as the Lady Panthers take it upfield. It will stay Franklin Ball. Finally the toss in as again, Franklin with a deliberate pace. He'll toss it deep this time. Now into the corner. And a goal kick for Milford. Do they have time to get it back down the field? LeBlanc sets up for the kick. Deflected along to center by Franklin over the head of Kibbe. She couldn't settle it. And now Franklin will take it back down the field. And this will likely do it. Milford able to win it back. Back out to center. And a kick now for the Lady Panthers. In the final moments of this Hockamock League Davenport versus Kelly Rex showdown. And there is the final whistle. So Milford with one final burst late in the half. The free kick by Madeline Boyle. The Ball briefly drifting beyond the goal line, but no goal awarded with contact made by Milford against the goalkeeper, and that was really the only prime scoring chance Milford had on the day as they are shut out for their second straight match to open up this season. They lose today to Franklin by the final score of 1-0. The lone goal in the game came within the first three minutes as senior Jess Krauschel was able to send it in off of a Bit of a defensive breakdown for Milford, and that is it. A one to nothing final score, so Milford will search on for their first goal in their first win of the season. They'll take an 0-2-0 record into their matchup on the road against Taunton on Wednesday, and they'll continue to operate on the road with a matchup against Stoughton coming up on Friday, their next game at home, coming up on September 19th when they take on the Canton Lady Bulldogs. So that is all for our coverage here for today. For Mike Sperling, I am Tim Coet. Your final score one final time. A one to nothing loss for Milford at the hands of the Franklin Lady Panthers. This has been a presentation of Milford High School Athletics here on Milford TV. So long, everybody.